right, today we're gonna be diving into the May Art Snacks Plus box. So let's open it up, find out what's inside, and make something with it. This is the 400 series of the Strathmore Bristol board. Is it Bristol board? That thick stuff, you know? It's nine by 12 and there are 15 sheets. Usually when I get paper this big, I like to cut it in half and use a half section. Now on to the art supplies. First off, we have the, ooh, we've gotten this a few times. Always from Art Snacks too. I'm suspicious. I don't know, but it's the Marabou Graphics Fine Liners and it's in the four pack with a black, green, blue, and a red. Oops. They are color coded on the lids. Are they like fine points? That's right, it said fine liner. Doi. Oh, we have the arts. <gasps> it's Warhead. This is the forbidden candy of my childhood. You had to be extra good and you had to be on vacation and probably some other element to be able to get your hands on one of these when I was a kid. They were my brother's favorite candy and I couldn't stand them. They were too sour, but because he liked them, I like forced myself to like them and I still do. Here we have the two menus. One lists the art supplies that are in the original Art Snacks box, and then the two items that are exclusively in the Art Snacks Plus, the Bristol board and these fine liners. So the rest came in the regular Art Snacks. I love these. They still bring me joy. <laughs> the King Art brush pen works like a pen, acts like a brush. Mess-free watercolors. It looks like a navy blue, turquoise green, a mauve purple, and a peachy yellow. This is a very strange assortment of colors. We'll see. Let's take a look at what's inside here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, we have the uh, Art Snacks sticker. Kind of looks like a tiger and a wood pattern at the same time. One of those two things. Maybe both of them. Huh? Oh, there's actually some interesting things. Hi, in whoa! This is my first Copic Multiliner. It's in the color black and it's a 0.3. A little bit smaller than I usually go for, but I'll make it work. I like 0.5 usually. I do have one other Copic Multiliner that came in that scroller box that I was featured in, but it was like a mauve purple, so it doesn't always get used. But this I will use to death. I can already feel it. What else? Looks like a pencil of some kind. It looks like it actually might be a blue pencil. It's in Irogeton. Your guess is as good as mine. Ta-da! Thanks, Hello Kitty. There you can see. We have an aqua pen graphics. This is a water-based marker. It's brush end on one side and I believe bullet on the other. Yes, sir. I have used these before. We did a really large illustration actually with them and I added water to like blend out the colors. This will probably work really well with these guys. This is an India ink marker, apparently a chiseled nib. Oh, it's very small actually. Now India ink is waterproof, but there's a bit of drying time. So I can create like a line art with this before I go in with my water-based art supplies and it won't bleed. So I guess the next step is to go ahead and swatch them out. Voila! The Bristol board literally says, one surface for all your dry media needs. <laughs> Try it out with your Tombow pencil. Are you telling me I shouldn't use any of the other art supplies with it? That's asking a lot of me. And it would just be so easy to just, you know. You know. Why was the pencil brought in for questioning? It was acting very sketchy. Look at that barrel. Look at that bullet nib. Whoa, that's tiny. Now with these pens, you can actually just add water. Get different effects too, but straight out of the tube. Looks like this. Blend it. Oh, well that's a dirty paintbrush, but you get the idea. Just get a feel for the colors. Oh, that's almost purpley. That's like classic Barney, and then that's like newer, improved Barney. You don't look the same. Iro D10 is the Japanese expression for color encyclopedia. That's not a G, it's a J. This looks a little metallic. If we like dilute some of those colors, I think this will look really good over top. As they are right now, they're definitely competing. There's not enough difference in tone there. This marker requires a little bit of homework. Shake, squish, and draw. Shake well, not medium well. Then you're supposed to squishy squish. Oops, I pushed way too hard. That brush is kind of soft. I'm used to like Posca's and harder brush nibs. Oh, I don't want to squish that at all. It's so squishy. Maybe if I just do a little shake. There it goes. It's very soft, softer than I was expecting. A lot of the work is going to be in my wrist. When that dries, we should be able to put water-based art supplies on top of it without it blending. I add a little water, it'll probably blend. Loop. Case in point. See, this is stiffer. Oh, I love this color. Mmm. Unique. Oh, I got my hand in the India ink. Let's do a little swatch with this guy so we can see it in comparison. The Copic Multiliner is also waterproof when it's dry. Oh yeah, see how much bigger these are? We got black, blue, green, and red. Voila! Swatches complete. 
That's invisible. Okay, that might be a better bet. The India ink is dry and it's not smudging. Might not be completely dry. India ink's one of those ones that you should let it cure almost like 12 hours. But we might be able to get away with less than that if I'm very careful. But see how that pastel color when you add a little bit of water? Now when I put this over it, it's gonna stand out a little more. I do wish this pencil was a little darker. I think we can get away with that. Okay, those blend. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't blend quite as much. And then this blends out too. I don't know if it shows up on camera, it's so pastel. Now, looking at our supplies, we should make something with it. I do want to continue my mermaid fruit challenge, but also at the same time, I kind of want to draw something else right now. Let's just kind of like sketch around and see what sparks. This is waterproof enough. I definitely don't want to use all these colors because I think that's going to end up looking pretty sloppy. Especially with these, I don't know how those are supposed to go with these. Warm up the old wrist Peacock blue, eh? Well, how about some of this action? Is that what a peacock feather looks like? <laughs> don't think so. That's where references are gonna come in handy. The point in this is just to kind of get a feel for the art supplies while using them in action. Blend it out. Take this guy. Place it down then kind of smudge it around. They didn't include a paintbrush. So I'm just doing on this on my own accord here. These do not look like peacock feathers. <laughs> oh, we also have this. We should probably have a heavy emphasis on black. Ooh, ooh. I don't know why it's so fun to draw in straight pigment like that. It kind of just doesn't absorb any light because it's the color black. I mean, it absorbs all the light. Excuse me. <laughs> that India ink's still wet. Very interesting the way you layer it and like what blends and what doesn't. Each art supply seems to have a different tolerance for water. Another face, why not? You know what I need to do? start like super small and kind of just look for fun shapes to incorporate. If I'm going to do a character or any kind of illustration, that's still going to help. I'm digging that peacock vibe. Like a Mary Poppins style, what's that? 1910-ish outfit? You can even put a peacock in here. What am I thinking? Peafowl, technically. Peacock's the boy, Peafowl's the girl. Or is it Peahen's the girl and Peafowl is both of them? I think it might be that way. They have those little birdie things on the tip of their head. Birdie <laughs> feathers. <laughs> Creepy bird faces. No offense. That looks like a turkey. I will grab a reference. I'm kind of just having fun here though. Just give me a second. Ooh, that's gonna look cool. I think peacocks are kind of green with like that almost holographic purpleness to them, you know? Look how the colors are gonna work. I think this is gonna work. So this is what a peacock looks like. <laughs> A little different. That's what made it look like a turkey is these extra wings. This big opening is like part of the wings. Oh, peacock anatomy, huh? There's a little head, like a pinball shape. Pins, bowling pins. Don't know why I always say that. And they have a booty, feathers here here and then that's where it all sprouts into that gorgeous plume so this part actually kind of looks like scales and they have these like eyeball sections hey that actually doesn't look too bad i think this is gonna be one of those things that like the more of them you have the better they're all gonna end up looking not really about perfection and in nature the perfection is in the imperfections the fact that this is something that exists is bewildering. People don't go out there and have to create it. Life finds a way. So basically it comes out of here, not back here. And maybe these wings still exist. Anyway, the face. Really, I like drawing faces. Very short beak. <gasps> Looky, it looks like a peacock. And they have big feet. Hold all those feathers. I think I got this swooshy shape a little different. I'm seeing another reference and it looks so noodly and squashed, <laughs> this thing. <laughs> I wonder what that's called. The next section is very malleable. Is that the word? That was kind of like one of the most difficult things that I had to grasp when I was drawing like animals because they have a lot of pudginess around their limbs. When they sit, it doesn't necessarily look like the skeletal shape of their legs. And so it's like more blobular. And this is a pretty good example of that with this neck. See like straightened out versus crunched. I'm gonna try and throw color on this one though because it looks cute. Start in the darkest areas. And I don't want to put any color where it's supposed to be white. I like the slight hue shifts, even though it's not necessarily seen in the references. It's almost a perfect peacock color. Then this area is actually, you could probably get away with saying silvery pink. Just try and get away with like the colors that we have. Push those boundaries a little. You need to add like the texture. They kind of get bigger as they get to the top. Ooh, no, hate it, hate it. Why did I do that? 
Hey, that's better. It would be fun to try an abstract way of doing it, but I don't think you can really pull off abstract unless you know exactly what it was supposed to look like from the get-go. Otherwise, it just kind of looks like you messed up. <laughs> These are complicated little beasts. It's actually peacock blue, but it looks so green. You can use this for a little shading, maybe? Is that a little overboard on the blue? The pink with the yellow is not bad either. I think I like the darkness of this. Gotta be careful using this pen though, because this one's one of those ones that really blends with the water. Actually, just the straight colors might be what I'm looking for, you know, without blending it out too much. I don't know if it'll make it. Oh, this is their actual wing. Look at this video where it opens up. Look, there's the colored part. It stays a wing. I kind of like the idea of drawing it closed though. This. Looks like work. This looks like fun. That's how I make that decision. <laughs> I wonder if there's like a way I can simplify it while still making it look good. Okay. I do think I'm gonna be able to get away with the purple eye instead of it being yellow. I do wish it kind of popped a bit better. What would be cool for like our finished illustration would be to have like a character with a peacock on their shoulder. It's like the person. And then there's like the peacock on the shoulder and then these plumes can just sort of like fall around and maybe her arm can even like imitate the head of a peacock on her shoulder i think the idea has promise let me just try again i like the swirliness of the peacock you don't get that swirly when you like open up the plumes how much can we get away with it being swishy that's a cool shape but like i love seeing it sideways with like the little plumes you can kind of like imitate a bird's head this way that almost looks like a bird on its own maybe out looks more like a dancer that's the cool thing about doing little thumbnails you can just make the paper bigger so you know to shrink your design <laughs> we'll pull this further out yeah my thumb fell off <laughs> Something about it just falling straight down in like a waterfall, I really like. Maybe like a really flowy sort of float in there pose. So I guess I should give her a ground to stand on. I think I'll just go with this guy. And for colors, I do think I'm gonna go with something similar to this and then maybe mix the purples. We'll see. I want that arm to be able to come up really high. So then the head would probably have to be here, which is a little bit smaller than I wish I had to draw. And then we'll curve her around, all loopy whoopty. I do kind of like the little heel kick. Just trying to block in the shapes. I feel like I'll like it here. I like that sort of shape. Chisel away with that. I think I made the torso. Oh wait, 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 wait. This whole section, there's a lot more down there. Got a whole lot of body left, you know? Then those little circles go here. And give some more meat on that leg. Can I lighten anything? Maybe not quite as wide-eyed, but still keep like a happy sort of content face. I'm actually pretty pleasant. Surprised by how well this erases for not being like marketed as erasable. I mean, unless they are, but I didn't know. Oh, that's a cute face. I'm happy with that. And then her hand, I want it to be like slightly erase some of those unnecessary lines. I think this one's still a bit more squishy. Can I do it like logically enough? I could kind of pull this knee back a little maybe, but I like the swissiness. You draw through so you can see all the lines and stuff that you want, but then you end up drawing that thing on top and then you end up erasing the lines that you could see through and then it doesn't quite look as nice. <laughs> Now is her torso too long? Kind of fun and flowy and expressive. What if I just give her like a ponytail? That would kind of imitate that like sort of flowy waterfall. Oh, that's not bad. I like that. It kind of balances it. The asymmetry, <laughs> the a, the asymmetry was cool with just the one side. Kind of cool this way too, maybe. Gave her a small nose to kind of imitate the small beak of the peacock. Beep, beep, beep. Part of me wants to just give her like clothes that you'd wear to the zoo because that's the only place I've ever seen a peacock. But I also don't feel like it fits the theme here. Maybe ballerina warm-up clothes, although I don't think a ballerina would ever have their hands sprawled like that. <laughs> Aren't they supposed to be like... I don't know, I wasn't a ballerina. You know what would also be kind of a cool idea? Is if I color the peacock but leave the character just black and white with like the India ink and the color of the paper. So this is our darkest blue. We want that for the body of the peacock. This is the one that like really blends with water. So I don't have to worry. It's going to dissolve. I won't see any of the lines. <laughs> Here I want these to be very straight lines. So I don't want the even chance of moisture hitting them and having them expand. So that's gonna be like something I do almost last. 
color it kind of like a coloring book i guess there you go okay so now this section is that pink color thank you brush nib then this is green i do want like lots of variations of green just because there's a lot going on with a peacock this section is gonna have those tiny little feathers with like a lot of almost like zigzaggy patterns and then here's when we're gonna start the bigger feathers this area i do want to shrink a little i don't know if it's too late we'll find ways to hide our mistakes <laughs> don't you worry these pens don't quite blend as much as the um, marabou color graphics I weirdly love how weird and stylized this thumb is. Now this, the tail. There are actually more up here at the top. They can get kind of bigger as they get lower. How's it looking? How's it looking? I don't need to fill in the whole thing because it does seem to travel with water. Not too shabby. Let that dry and we can move back over here. Their beak seems to be a little bit more curved than I've been drawing it. I like that. I'm gonna go with this guy. Create the feathery bits. Now this is really water soluble, so by the end it might just be green, but that's also what I want, so it's a win-win scenario here. I like this adding a bit of texture there. I don't know if you can see it. And then once that's dry, definitely gonna need some shading to separate these feathers because they're definitely blending in. Oh, the other thing I want to do is take the blue and kind of draw straight up. See? Ooh! Definitely looks kind of fuzzy. Fuzzy, feathery. Hmm. What's the difference? We'll use the finer point on this. And we'll try to keep the blue on its own. I think this is probably what I'm going to use to shade between the feathers. Okay. Just a little blue dot. Try to stay away from the purple as much as possible. And obviously each one's going to look a little different. That's nature. We all look a little different. I do wish I made them bigger. I think that's my regret with this. But this will do. It'll do, pig. I might just throw orange in a couple other ones so it doesn't look singular. There we go. I think I do like the idea of this being solid black because then I don't think it'll distract from all this detail going on. So we can go ahead and use this and outline it first with this. Now the problem here with this, these legs don't make any anatomical sense. So it's hard to draw the fabric laying over them. This guy, there's no erasing it once you put it down. Oh, this is so scary. Oh my God. When I was a kid, Sharpies were like the grown-up marker, and it just feels so special. I love the way the black looks with the green and the watercolor. I have to find a white gel pen to really separate these legs again. Almost like band tattoos. All right, let's let that dry before we touch it, and we don't want any water to go near it either. I think I do want to add the line art to the body parts here. That was a weird way of saying that. <laughs> Our curvy femur. No, it's not a femur, is it? Whatever. What happened with this thumb? I think this finger was from a different rendition of the hand. I was not thinking at all. Man, right at the end. Although, wait, we could probably even do worse with the face. Let's see. Had a little bit of a hairline and then the ponytail. I like the idea of like really simplifying this. Voila! Those tattoo things. I kind of like seeing the sketch, to be honest. It definitely needs something else. The idea. Purple here, green, with the blue. Oh yeah, this looks pretty creepy because <laughs> it looks like eyes. Yeah, that doesn't work. But it does look peacocky. That should never be a word. This idea would be just purple for the eyelid. And then that would blend into the green and the blue. The black's blending in a bit too much. So it'd be like green for the eyelid, which would blend into purple. It almost creates a blue. And then blue. I think the green eyelid actually looks better. We'll just color the eyelid green. We'll blend out from there. Then a little blue. And then the purple. Ooh, wait, that looks kind of cool. Maybe purple lips too. They have so many colors. If you like really look at them, more colors than you could probably count. <laughs> kind of fun because then like the only colors are the pop of peacocky colors. I used to use that word again. Oh shoot. I feel like it needs some kind of background element to fill the space. Thinking something like in solid black, like some kind of abstract shape. For those interested in the escapades of this eraser, I still haven't quite seen, like you can kind of see the mountain, but it's just so squashy. I don't know, I need to like get rid of more of this blue here. And maybe we can finally end up with this Mount Fuji shape with our little snow cap showing. I don't know, we're getting there. I'm kind of slowly learning what part to erase with to get what I want. Like, like this. Ooh, that was a whim. <laughs> Oops, I did it. Almost like the eye shapes. Every time I do this, it like totally ruins everything, but like I keep doing it. 
I must just enjoy it. It's kind of swishy and swirly whirly. Told you my weakness with solid black markers. There we go. It's my weird abstract thing. These got a little close together. But I like how it kind of like gets wispier as it gets to the bottom. This kind of area I like. Oh, here we go. Which was the last one? This guy. It wasn't really all that necessary. <laughs> but it kept my drawing from moving. I didn't really end up using all that much watercolor. It's just right in that center section. But just the fact that I actually tapped it down is kind of good for me because I always forget to when I need to. So maybe it'll just become routine. Here she blows. Here's my little uh, peacock lady dancer surrounded by flowy eyeballs. That's, that's the title. But hey, there she is. My favorite part's the peacock. Honestly, the character was just drawn to add more expression. <laughs> thank you guys for watching and a big thank you to Art Snacks Box for sending me this box to try out and to share with you guys if you're interested in getting your own subscription. There'll be links in the description. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. <gasps> Bye!